Thank you. Thank you, musicians, for ministering to us today. It's a great day in the house of the Lord. Um, have you had a smile on this week? Well, I don't know that you'll really smile about this, but I did read an article about a gentleman that went to a very, very, very nice restaurant. You know, it was one of those kind of restaurants that required a tie. And uh, he went with no tie. And when he got there to the, to the uh, restaurant and went in the door, the, the maitre d' said, I'm sorry, sir, I will not be able to seat you until you get a tie. And he thought for a moment, and he said, man, I don't have any ties. And there's no stores around here that are open. And so he thought, well, I'll just go look through my car. And maybe, maybe somehow, some way, I left a, a, a tie sometime in my car. And so he went out to the parking lot and dug through his car. No tie. Uh, no piece of material, nothing. The only thing he could find in the trunk of his car were a set of jumper cables. So he was really, he's wanting to eat, and he's really wanting to go, so he thought, well, I'll try it. So he took those jumper cables, wrapped them around his neck, and tried to fix a fancy knot as he could fix, and, and one of the cables was dangling down there, some similarity to a tie. And he walked back to the restaurant. And the maitre d's kind of looked him up and down. And finally he said, okay, I'll let you in. Just don't start anything. Well, I hope that you have started something in your, in your journey, spiritual journey this week. I have to hope that many of you have joined with us in our reading of the same passage of Scripture each and every day. If you haven't, I encourage you. There are some uh, sheets out there on the uh, Welcome Center that have daily uh, Scripture readings. You can go to engagetheword.nazarene.org, and I believe you can still get signed up. Or if you'd just like to get the scripture passage, uh, uh, I'll send it to you each day. If you'll send me an email, let me know. But uh, we are reading the same passage of scripture. And uh, Nazarenes all over, uh, all over the world are reading the same passage of scripture. And many, many pastors are preaching from the same passage of scripture. And today for us, it's the passage of Exodus chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. And it actually goes all the way through chapter 4, verse 7. But I'm only going to read the first 10 verses of Exodus chapter 3. So take your Bibles and turn with me. We're going to start something here in just a few moments. Exodus chapter 3. When you find that passage, uh, I encourage you to stand in honor of the Word of God. And together we will, I will read to you and follow along and listen as we hear from the Word today. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. And when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. 
So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land into good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jezebites. And now the cry of the Israelites have reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. This is the word of God. You may be seated. This passage in Exodus chapter 3 is a well-known story of the encounter between Moses and the Lord God. It starts when Moses notices that a bush out in the desert is not consumed by fire. It seems to me that the indication must be that a fiery bush in the desert was not really an unusual sight. But a bush that was not consumed by the fire was noticeable. You know, for me, after living out in the panhandle for almost 17 years, as I read this story, I picture a tumbleweed. A dried up thistle that when it's on fire, it's, it's really like a piece, piece of flash paper. Have you ever seen that paper that, that the magicians often will use? They'll light it and kind of throw it up and it's just, whoosh, it's gone. <clears throat> That's how I picture a thistle or a tumbleweed. That's how I picture that Moses must have thought about this bush in the desert. It, it wasn't unusual for them to see a bush that caught fire, but this bush did not burn up. And so being red-blooded and a, and, and a man, he thought, he, he was curious, I'll just go over and check this out. I, I want to see this bush that's not burned up. There's something significant. There's something special about this bush. And so he walks over to the bush. And when he gets over there, he hears the voice of the angel of the Lord. And as he gets close, the Lord God himself speaks from the bush. And he hears the Lord God say, take off your sandals, for the place is holy ground. And when he began to listen to God speak, and God declaring who he was, Moses, it tells us, he hid his face because he was afraid to look at the Lord. You know, I, I have a question for us. What kind of response do we give when we encounter God? Well, you know, I don't really expect that many of us will walk around barefooted. Or maybe we're not walking around hiding our face. But it seems to me that when we recognize the holiness and we recognize the presence of God, there should be some sort of response. First and foremost, it seems to me that in my heart, there should just be this overwhelming sense of, of God's presence. And then as I sense the presence of God, I become in awe that God Himself the creator of all the universe, would come and encounter me, would speak to me. I think that I get thrilled in times when we've gathered together in a service like this and, and we're sitting singing. And all of a sudden, it seems as if the very presence of God Himself walks into the room and, and all across the sanctuary, you begin to see this this response, this individuals just standing among the in, in the sanctuary. It seems to me that, that it's the presence. It's a sacred moment. For others, you know, it may be a, a, a response of, of tears. We don't hear it much in our sanctuary, but sometimes there is this overwhelming sense of presence of God that, that just causes a person to, to respond with a loud exclamation of, of amen or, or praise the Lord or something that would just, just some kind of response that said, wow, God 
himself is here with me. His presence is holy and sacred. And, and I believe that our heart and our soul long, we long to be in his presence. Probably many of us have often heard preachers say and others say that it seems to me that there is some kind of God-shaped hole in our lives, in our hearts. You know, we can fill our life with all kinds of stuff from the world, but it seems as if there's just some kind of something missing until God himself is invited into our hearts and he himself begins to fill that presence and to fill that hole within us. And it's in this holy place that Moses hears God speak. Moses hears God calling him to do the impossible, the unthinkable. But yet God calls. God calls his people to accomplish God-sized accomplishments. And it's not something that was just for the pages of Scripture. He is still calling people today to do something that is God's side, to do something that with man it is impossible. With man it is unthinkable, but with God Almighty, all things are possible. You know, we tend to hear God's voice from the human perspective. We begin to try to analyze what we hear or think God is saying to us by thinking at it from a human perspective. And like Moses, we tend to become so human in our response. Moses quickly, if you read the rest of this chapter and into chapter 4, Moses quickly develops excuses why it can't be done. Why he can't do what God has asked him to do. His first excuse is so like us today. Moses says, I'm not adequate. And the second excuse follows very quickly when he says, what if they don't follow me? What if Pharaoh won't let us go? How often do we begin to make the same kind of human excuse when God has given us a God-sized call to do something in His kingdom. I'm not capable, God. I'm not adequate. I have not been in this Christian faith long enough. I don't have all of the answers. What if they won't follow me? What if I say something and people laugh at me? What if? What if? But you know, God makes the same promise to us that He made to Moses thousands of years ago. God promises that He will provide for us His presence and His power to accomplish anything and everything that He asks us to do. Oh, my friend, what is it? that God is asking of us. What nation is crying out for deliverance in our world? Or maybe it's not a whole nation that God is interested in using us to deliver. Maybe it's just a a child in a Sunday school class. that comes from a home that's less than desirable. And God has called us to become a a teacher or a helper, maybe a mentor to young people. Maybe God is calling us to just give an hour a month that we would say to a teenager, I'm praying for you. Tell me how I can encourage you. Maybe God is calling us to to be part of a, a Christmas program with lots and lots of lights. 
oh, maybe we can't sing quite like an angel. But you know, God has given us a little bit of talent. And God can take a little bit of a talent and use it to reach the lost and the hurting nations. Did you catch what Moses, what God said to Moses? God said to Moses, I have heard the crying out of the people of Israel. I have heard of their suffering. And because they have cried out to me, I am now coming to you in this bush to call you to do something that from man's perspective, it's impossible. I mean, think about Moses for a moment. I wrote a little bit about this this morning in, in the email. I mean, this guy was far from perfect. I, I mean, you know, he remember, remember Moses' story? Remember when he was a little child and, and, and Pharaoh had issued the edict that all children under the age of two, all Hebrew children under the age of two were to be killed because there had become too many Israelites in the nation? But Moses' mother protected him and, and hid him. And then when Moses began to get too big, remember he was put out into a basket in the bulrushes? And there the daughter of Pharaoh saw this little Hebrew child and she took him in and raised him as his own. But then remember, one day Moses saw an Egyptian hurting an Israelite. And Moses looked around and thought he was all by himself, and he went and killed, the, he murdered the Egyptian. And then a few days later, remember, he hears the story, or he sees a couple Israelites fighting, and so he goes to them and says, Hey, man, you guys are brothers. What are you doing fighting? Can't you get along? Don't you understand in the, in the situation that we're in that we Israelites need to stick together? And the Israelites said, so what are you going to do to us? You're going to kill one of us like you killed the Egyptian? And Moses, the murderer, Moses, the man that was imperfect, fled and went and lived in the desert, isolated and alone. Well, almost alone. He did find a priest that had a daughter, got married, but he's out in, alone in the desert. And it's there in that desert that God comes to him and says, Hey, you, you murderer, you imperfect person, go now and bring deliverance for my people. I venture to say that no one here has committed murder. Yes, we may be imperfect. But God is not looking for perfect people. God is looking for available people. People that will encounter Him wherever it is. And when He calls us and gives us a God-sized task, we will say, here am I. God has called us to be light in the darkness. God has called us to be a ray of hope for the hopeless. God has called you. God has called me to be a source of strength for the weak. He has called us to be an ounce of courage for the coward. Today, God is calling us to go and bring deliverance. Maybe not for a whole nation, but it may be for a neighbor or a co-worker or someone you go to school with. That God wants to use us to do a God-sized accomplishment. And so I ask you today, in light of the Word of God, in light of what God did thousands of years ago to speak to a, an imperfect individual, Is our heart. Are our hearts open 
And are we listening to God's voice? Are we putting ourselves in position where we can encounter the living God and hear His voice calling us to go now? Father God, as we come to the conclusion of this message today, this has been a great service. I believe that in the midst of what has gone on, I believe that you've been praised and we've lifted you up because we recognize that you are our God. And Lord, you want to encounter us. And you want to call us to become involved in the midst of your kingdom. To bring deliverance to men and women, young people, boys and girls who are living in oppression, who are suffering under the hand, under the rule of Satan and the world. Lord, we are thankful for the deliverance you've brought to us. And Lord, we know that we are not finished products yet. And in fact, we fail you many times. But you do not give up on us. You continue to call us. You have a task for us. And we, your church, we are not finished in being a part of building your kingdom. So Lord, I pray that today and throughout this week, that our minds will be drawn to a time that we encounter you. Or maybe we just need a fresh encounter with you. Maybe it'll be while we're driving to work on Tuesday morning. Maybe when we're listening to a song on on the radio or a CD. Or maybe it's when we're sitting in our chair and watching the sunset. Or maybe, Lord, it'll be in the midst of a trial and a struggle that you come to us and speak to us and call us to go. And oh, Father, Father, please help us not to give excuses. May we discover your power to look around at what's in our hands. And may we be willing to throw it down and let you bring a chain to a staff. Or maybe we'd be willing to stick our hand into the cloak of our coat and, and uh, discover that you have the power to, to bring transformation to our word, to our lives. Thank you, Lord. And today we praise you. And we are anticipating what you will speak and how you will speak to each one of us in the days ahead. And we look forward to hearing the testimony and seeing the miraculous provision that you provide to bring deliverance to your people. Thank you, Lord, for your word. May it engage our hearts and call us to respond. In Christ's holy name I pray. And all God's people said. Thank you for listening today. I pray that you'll take this home and think about it. And uh, I, I purposely didn't give you necessarily a chance to respond this morning. Because I think that this is a, a message that we need to let simmer a little bit. It's a message that we need to take home with us and we need to think about. And then when we encounter God, that we respond to His call. Reminder that tonight, our service is moved from this location over to the Yukon First Church of Nazarene where we will be a participant in the, the Zone Missionary Rally for our district with uh, missionary Steve Baker. It starts at 6 o'clock. The address is 525 Main Street in Yukon. Uh, go up Mustang Road to Old Highway 66 or to Highway 66 and turn left. It'll be on the north side of the highway. May the Lord be with you today. May His faith.